More resident Edwin Shaw has a collection unlike any you've ever seen. He came upon it by chance in an apartment in Munich, Germany. When the 94-year-old pulls it out of storage, he opens the door to another era. Nuremberg was one of the most destroyed towns I ever saw by bombs. On September 10th, 1940, Edwin Shaw enlisted in the Oklahoma National Guard. A week later, the 45th Infantry Division was federalized, and for the next five years, he served throughout Central Europe. I was Chief Warrant Officer, Regimental Supply, and uh, that was where I was during the whole war, present supply work. Work that sent Edwin on a journey across Germany, and ultimately to the doorstep of a rather unexpected address, the Munich apartment of Adolf Hitler. They were looking for a place to set up headquarters and they just went to this building in a sort of a square there in Munich and picked the building out and thought they'd go inside of that and see if there's room that they could set up headquarters. And they, what they got onto was Hitler's living quarters, so they looked out on that. Suddenly, the place where Hitler once lived while in Munich was now the home of Americans. U.S. soldiers lounged on couches previously used by the Fuhrer, and one of the first people into the building was Edwin. There's a telephone on the wall there, and I picked it up and cranked it. It's a crank telephone. I cranked it. Some male voice and answered on the other end in German. I said, the Americans have taken over. Click. He hung up immediately, so. I don't know whether I got Berlin or some army unit somewhere else, but I got some of the German military, and I let them know that the Americans had taken over the, his living quarters there. Most of the items you see on these tables came from that apartment. And this is that inlaid box. It just amazes me how they could do all of that. Being one of the first to enter, Edwin had the pick of the litter among Hitler's personal effects. Among the numerous items he found were letters from Hitler's housekeeper, describing events recently depicted in the movie Valkyrie. It mentioned to her, said, wasn't it a shame what they tried to do to our Fuhrer? They were referring to the assassination attempt on his life. And... Uh, so that was mentioned in one of the letters. He found numerous unique items like this wooden jewelry box with detailed inlay depicting the German countryside. And further inside the apartment was Hitler's desk and his personal stationery. I wrote back a letter to my folks on some of Hitler's personal sec uh, stationery telling them that I was seated at Hitler's desk, had my feet propped up on the desk and showing all kinds of disrespect for him that I could. And I'm sure he never dreamed that a boy from Oklahoma would be sitting at his desk. This incidentally was the desk where he and Chamberlain, the Prime Minister of England, worked out their non-aggression agreement. Other items uncovered by Edwin included a portrait of Hitler painted on wood, photo albums of Nazi construction projects, several propaganda books, numerous newspaper clippings Hitler collected, and even a German grammar book dating back to the 1700s. Another book he found was signed to Hitler by his propaganda photographer. It's signed by the photographer, Lenny Reifenstahl. Uh, she was a famous photographer back then, and he used her pictures mainly for propaganda purposes. When Germany fell and the 45th marched through the country, American troops often had the opportunity to obtain Nazi artifacts like these firearms and knives, originally belonging to SS soldiers. 
All told, Edwin amassed a collection that now requires five or six tables to display, which leads observers to ask a common question. How'd you get them all back? Well, I just put it in a footlocker, and the footlocker came on through, so I, I was just lucky in that respect. But there were some artifacts from the war Edwin isn't so jovial about, particularly his pictures of concentration camp Dachau, for which his division was one of the first to pass through. Especially looking at a railroad siding alongside the camp had 39 freight cars, box cars and grain cars, and coal cars and open cars like that. 39 of them on that siding and they were all filled with dead bodies, just piled up as high in those freight cars they could be. And I can still visually see one particular box car that uh, had the bodies piled up in there just as high as I could tell. Two men would take a body and do the one, two, three, and heave ho, and throw it up there just as high on the stack as they could get them. And, uh, but that made quite an indelible impression on me. The atrocities of the war make Edwin bristle any time he hears accusations that such things never occurred. I knew it wasn't any fabrication because I saw too many emaciated bodies all of these images and artifacts Edwin packed in his footlocker and sent home to Oklahoma. And then, exactly five years to the day he enlisted, Edwin went home too. Today he has quite a story to tell, and the personal effects of one of history's most notorious dictators. No, I'm sure he didn't have any idea his personal fingers would wind up in the middle of the United States like this.